five years ago, I had a company approach me, and this was a career-changing project. It included branding, design, development, the whole nine yards for a company in the fashion industry. Now, I can't name this company, so we're just going to call them Fancy Pants. So Fancy Pants wants you to be able to customize every possible iteration of, let's say, a pair of jeans. You can get long jeans, short jeans, you can have bedazzled jeans if you want, every iteration. So very slowly, this project scope started increasing, and I realized if we're going to do an online shop that shows every possible iteration of these very customized jeans, um, this was going to be a way bigger project than I had budgeted for. So this involved a lot of extra Photoshopping, a lot of extra outsourcing. We spent so many hours on this project uh, over time, I don't even want to think about it. And you can imagine what happened. We're getting ready to open the carts, and there's nothing like, actually, I shouldn't say there's nothing. There were a few sales, and they were friends of mine and friends of the clients. <laughs> and it was one of the most painful experiences to launch something that got no traction whatsoever. Around the same time that this project failure happened, my partner and I decided we wanted to try our hand at software. As you can imagine, client services is a totally different beast than software. So I started learning about uh, product development, onboarding, uh, customer research, uh, minimum viable product, all these new terms that I hadn't really heard before in client services. And I wondered, why is nobody doing MVP in client services. This was crazy to me. It was, it was a whole new opportunity. So I wondered, when I look back at this project failure, I asked myself, how could we minimize the failing and maximize the learning? And as a designer, I was being hired to execute this project, but I just felt so responsible for not being able to help the client identify that this project maybe wasn't worth investing that much effort in in the first place. So I kind of got obsessed with the idea of the MVP which is the minimum, minimum viable product. So an MVP is the minimum thing that you need to create value for a client, a customer, a user. It works in products, it works in services. Um, it is not a crappy first version of a thing. Uh, it has to deliver value to the user. So it is like the smallest possible, it's like a practice project. And I, I doubled down on this whole concept of the MVP and I, I got a little obsessed with it, and I'm like, <laughs> let's MVP the shit out of everything. What else can we MVP? Let's MVP that sales page. What's the first version of that sales page gonna look like? Uh, what else could we MVP? So clients would come to me, and they'd want these gigantic online courses, and I'd say, okay, well, can we test that people actually want this online course in the first place? So rather than build out a whole you know, eight-week curriculum, Let's build you an audience first. Let's, let's build you a blog. Let's, let's make sure that people actually want what you have to offer. So really, I started teaching my client to adopt the MVP as a mindset approach. It's about learning. It's about willing to test your assumptions. So we don't want to build this right out of the gate, right? We don't want to build this monstrosity of a wedding cake. And this is kind of what that fancy pants project really felt like. We didn't do any learning along the way. We never stopped once to ask customers, if the product was something that they wanted in the first place. So the key is that you got to start with the cupcake. Once you've figured out that the oven is working properly and you've worked out your flavors and you've got the, the icing worked out, then you can move on and you can build a cake. Then you can build your wedding cake. So we don't want to start wedding cake first. We want to learn, we want to work out the kinks with the cupcake. A cupcake could look like any number of things. I'm going to show you guys a few examples. Um, again, it could be as simple as even writing a blog post. Um, that's one of the first things I'll get one of my clients to do if they have no audience or no traction. I'll say, write an epic blog post. I want to know that you can actually get some traction with a piece of writing before you go on to build this crazy, giant digital product. So I had a client come to me and they said, I want to be the B-school of end-of-life planning. I don't know if you guys know who Marie Forleo is, Marie Forleo's B-School. Um, you know, she's been working on that B-School for many, many years. Um, and so I told my client, we need, forget the, forget the wedding cake, we need to make you a cupcake. What is that first thing going to look like? And so one way to reframe the problem, because they were obviously thinking with the solution in mind, right? They're like, we want to build an eight-week curriculum. So I asked, 
the real question that we're trying to solve here is how can we get people to be more proactive about their end of life planning? That was the real challenge that the client was after. So instead of building one giant course, I said, because they have no audience, let's start with a few cupcakes, which I, I consider small experiments. So the first thing we did was we did a really, really simple homepage that segmented people into a few different areas. They wanted to pursue doing an online self-study course, which was an eight-week program. They also needed to start offering one-on-one -on -one services. Because this is a brand new business, they've never done these services one-on-one -on -one with people before. So what ended up happening was the in-person circles actually ended up being way more popular. It was a quick way to get cash in the door, and it was a great way for people to work out the curriculum with people in real time to hear that feedback. When you clicked on the online course, instead of building out the course, we just had a simple pop-up that said, this course is coming soon, sign up if you're interested. They didn't get a ton of signups. And yes, we probably could take it to the next level and do an MVP uh, landing page to test interest. So the first thing we did is we got them doing these in-person circles as part of the curriculum of these in-person circles, which is basically like a death cafe where you're getting people to talk about death. It's kind of dark. Um, <laughs> so. We had them create some resources and PDFs that the participants would go through. And some of the participants um, really found one of their particular PDFs uh, really valuable. So they actually took that PDF, turned it into a workbook, which then got the attention of a funeral director who wanted to license that, um, uh, wanted to create a licensing program out of that workbook. So this whole other revenue stream came out of this small experiment. And so the client's not wasting their time now on an eight week long curriculum. They're, they're doing a licensing program and they've discovered that it's actually a lot easier for them to sell to other businesses than it is to sell to consumers. Because you can imagine it's really difficult to get consumers to be proactive about their end of life planning. It's a pretty, it's a pretty big challenge. <laughs> Um, I had a financial planner come to me and she said she wanted to help make Canadians more financially literate, which is an awesome goal. So again, using a how might we question is a really great way to just make sure that you're solving the right problem. So how might we get Canadians to get their financial house in order? Um, and of course, a, a big goal of Shannon's was passive revenue. So she was booked out for years. Um, she had more business than she knew what to do with, but she's always giving the same advice over and over again to people. And so there's an opportunity for her to streamline that into an educational product. So because Shannon already had some traction, because she had an audience, because she had sales pages, I knew that she knew how the internet worked. I knew that she had some experience. I said, let's build a pilot program. She put out a call, she asked her Facebook friends, she said, I have an idea for sole proprietors. I'm gonna teach people how to get their taxes in order. Is this of interest to you? The pilot sold out in 15 minutes. It kickstarted and gave her 1,500 bucks. So she, I think, took a weekend and went and wrote the curriculum. And the way she delivered it was so simple. It was just a MailChimp sign up, four automated emails with a some shitty iPhone videos and some spreadsheets attached because that was the minimum that people needed to actually um, get some value out of the program. In most cases, it was just a spreadsheet that they needed. They didn't need any uh, fancy video editing or anything like that yet anyway. So that pilot program became Sole Proprietor School. <laughs> this is one of Shannon's uh, videos, you know, just relating to the fact that this is what she's seeing from her participants, right? Like people are crying around tax time. It's like the most stressful thing. Um, and so she took language from real people and real participants saying like, I don't want to get effed at tax time, right? And so she actually used this language and, and this is just beautiful. Like when you run a pilot, when you run an MVP and you hear the language that people are using, bring that into your sales page, right? Like your people will write your sales pages for you. It's brilliant. Um, so once she, once she knew that um, the pilot had sold out, she had a, a waiting list of people, um, then she can invest in the video editing and she can invest in brand new website, a whole new online course experience. So that's what we did for her. In the meantime, she could also build out multiple landing pages for the course ideas that she has. So she had a few other course ideas like budget with your boo, 
Um, can you afford a house? Uh, <laughs> again, <laughs> just really cutesy language that Shannon uses. And so she uses these landing pages to collect interest so that she knows which courses to focus on first. So the culmination of all of these courses ended up becoming uh, the new School of Finances, which houses everything together. But we started with the pilot. It was really rough and ready. Uh, there was nothing professional about the photos and, and the um, uh, you know, videos that she sent out initially. So again, an MVP really doesn't have to be complex. It should be the smallest thing that you need to deliver value right now. So I did this in my own business and I asked, how might I help web designers build more sustainable businesses? So my idea was a beta program for designers to help them transition into becoming digital strategists. It started as a simple post on Facebook and I said, hey designers, I have an idea for this course, would this be of interest to you? I had a ton of people say, hell yes, I'm like okay, this idea has legs. And as you can see, the call to action isn't even above the fold in this page. It was a really, really simple page. I just said, here's my concept, here's what I'm going to cover. I didn't know what the curriculum was going to look like, I was just putting the idea out there. Um, once I got about 35 signups, I'm like, okay, I need to do something with this. And I sent people personal email invitations and I said, um, I sent them actually a link to a pay what you can. Which sounds kind of crazy, but at the time I, I wasn't sure if I could pull off this whole idea. So I just said, it's a suggested value of $1,000, pay what you can, pick a price that you can pay every month for four months. Have at her. And I accepted everybody regardless of how much they paid. I had some people pay me $50 a month for four months. I had some people pay me $250 a month for four months. Um, and that was, that was just a fun experiment for me personally anyway. It's part of the MVP. Um, so I actually offered it as a six-month mentorship and as a self-study. Now, <laughs> the problem is I went right from like cupcake to like, oh my gosh, I have to build like all of the content and teach them everything I could possibly ever know about being a digital strategist. And the program was huge. It was again, six months um, and covered way, way, way too much. So I got feedback from the participants and realized I actually need to like take this giant program that I've made and now break it back into smaller individual projects. So if I'd built the thing that I thought I needed to build, the program would have, probably would have been even bigger, but the very beginning of the pilot program was simply a Facebook group. I added people to the Facebook group, I was hearing what they were saying, and I was noticing that where they were at was actually a lot, uh, a lot more beginner than I was expecting the content to be. So that was a huge insight. I, would have, I probably would have firehosed them even more than I already did. So then I actually hired an instructional designer who helped me figure out that the best course of action was to break up those 12 modules into much smaller one-off courses. So the most successful products and services are made with your customers, right? So I see a lot of customers that come to me and they're like, I know what my clients want, but I think when you move to a one-to-many model, as I've learned, um, you know, running my own software now, it's a whole different beast than one-to-one -one services, right? So um, you want to create with your customers. They're going to help you find the language for your sales pages. Um, running an MVP is going to help you kickstart your idea and get some traction. And those first people that sign up for your betas, those become your power users. They become your super fans. Those are the people that actually refer your stuff to their friends. Progress is contagious. Um, I think this is a huge, huge insight that I've seen from clients in, in client services, when I get my client that first win or when they make the first sale of their very first beta program, um, they're over the moon. That, that progress, it creates a momentum that's unstoppable. So I'm like, let's just get you that very, very first win. So the key is make sure that you're finding a problem worth solving. That's where it starts. Find the smallest version of that. Find the smallest way to solve that problem. Build and test an MVP and engage and co-create with your clients. That is the key to running an MVP. So if you've got a big ambitious idea, I encourage you, find your cupcake. <laughs> now what might I have done differently with that very first client that came to me, that disaster project? Um, the truth is they already had their cupcake. They had a website that was working for them and they didn't have sales then. They thought, doing a gigantic redesign and a really complex store customization was gonna save their business. So 
I might have assigned the client some homework and said, I want you to do some customer research interviews. I want you to show me that people are actually interested in this idea that you have and that they're willing to pay for it. Can you prove to me in even some tiny capacity that people are willing to pay for this? Um, and if the client wasn't open to checking their assumptions, I might have said, we're not a good fit for this project. Thank you. <laughs>